what up? That's the his squad, and welcome back, guys. Hey, it's your boy, Sean. And your girl, yes, Mel. Yes, yes, yes. Welcome, guys. Welcome to welcome Sean back. and Mel. How are you feeling, Sean? I'm feeling absolutely wonderful. All you know, right. Oh, what was up this morning? I cannot complain. Most what about definitely. yourself, my love? I'm you feeling, feeling great. I'm good, feeling good, good, good. Nice and positive energy. Yes. Get some of that. Get some of that. Get some of that positive energy, guys. All right, guys. All right. Guys. So, um, we are back with a video, and um, it's Diddy. Diddy is in the news. Um, every day, Diddy is in the news. So, All right. we just found out some more information. What we got today, babe? What All right. Got? Today, we'll be watching. He's a mafia boss. Diddy, latest feature, DJ Vlad. Okay. Household names will be revealed. Wow. Okay, so I didn't know Diddy was a mafia boss. They labeled him as a mafia boss? Wow. Well... Okay, so basically he's on, not Diddy isn't on, but I'm hearing that Jaguar Wright. Jaguar did name an has been coming up a lot. With Pierce Morgan. Whoa, Nelly. And this is, is this, the hot topic right now. I'm ready to jump into it. All right, let's Can get we go into, ahead and jump into it. it. Yes. All right, guys, so before we get into it, smash that like button, give this video a big fat thumbs up. And um, come on over, join the team, all right? Here we all go. All right, y'all. Let's go ahead and get into it. Here we let's go. go. Let's get into it. They committed. That'd be a way of actually lessening the amount of time that he does, or possibly even walking away. I absolutely do not see him being victorious in a criminal trial. This has been a fist of tyranny that has been punching for decades. It must stop. Well, Diddy's uh -oh. downfall has sent shockwaves through the entertainment industry and beyond. The blast radius from the uncovering of his alleged offenses could yet swallow many more powerful and famous figures. Diddy is accused of creating a criminal enterprise which engaged in sex trafficking, racketeering, kidnapping, bribery and forced labour. His lawyers say he'll fight the charges. But after the testimony you're about to hear, he'll be staggered he avoided the attention of law enforcement for so long. I'll speak to a lawyer, a whistleblower and an insider for an uncensored insight into Whoa. the showbiz scandal of a generation. And Jaguar, I'm going to start with you. Um, you've been called a whistleblower. Um, you knew Sean... Diddy Combs for a long time. You attended a number of his infamous parties. Um, and in 2022, you made headlines after comments uh, where you called him a sex trafficker. Uh, and in response, you were called crazy and jealous. Uh, do you feel vindicated yes. by the events of the last few weeks? No, not at all. Um, uh, because he's just the beginning. Until him and his cohorts are all held to account publicly and legally. The victims, they're not safe. How, how bad was That's it? That's what I care about. I care about the victims. No, I understand. How bad was it, do you think, what was going on? I'm going to tell you right now that me, as a woman who has been in the industry for over 30 years, um, I've been performing live since I was 13. My first handler was McKinley Horton. Um, I come to find out 25 years later wow. that a scar that was on his face with a very elaborate story he gave me was put there by a woman who he assaulted to live through these things and hear your elders, elders in the business, people like Patti LaBelle say, just avoid him, honey. Wow. Um, and wow. being taught to be a, just avoid him, honey. It's not good enough. Not when you live through these things, you're still suffering the PTSD created by all of this, and you're talking to a victim that's 20 years younger than you, and she's telling you the exact same thing that happened to you. Right, there's been a lot of uh, wow. rumor mill about what has happened in the rap world. A lot of allegations that the misogyny in the lyrics clearly was based on a general misogyny towards women away from the music. And that clearly seems to have been borne out by these charges against Diddy, which if he's found guilty of all this, he's never coming out of prison. How dangerous do you think... Thank God. How dangerous do you think he is as a person? I think he's one of the most dangerous people I've ever met. A lot of people have been wow. questioning, well, she doesn't really know him. She has no knowledge of him. She doesn't have a picture with him. I'm smarter than Claudia Jordan. 
I would never take a picture with the devil. Everyone knew he was the devil. He's been the devil for 30 years. Wow. He's been Woo, can we stop okay. right there for a minute? Just let I breathe. had chills because this woman finally gets to be heard after all of I mean, these years of trying to tell her story. This woman yeah. is finally, you know, put in a position to tell her truth and to, for all of us to realize that she wasn't lying. And I feel like, you know, she's been straight up and down. Like, you know, she's letting it out and she's not afraid. Wow. And she's spilling tea, like all like, the names. She's not holding back. She's yeah, tired. Yeah, she's not holding back at all. She's doing it you for know. the victims, as she said. Yes. Uh, and she labeled him the devil. The scary part is when, you know, she said the elders in the game, like Patty LaBelle, yeah. told her to just avoid Just avoid him. him. Like, that's scary. Wow. For the last 30 years. Here we go, guys. Here we go. Here we go. Covered and protected by not only Clive Davis, but Lucian Grange. Wow. He was selected to be the demon that he is to keep the culture in line so the industry could continue to rape it. So he's for like all a of beard. his precious jewels. Oh, he was chosen. Oh, we have too Wait a many minute. lost. Can we stop this for one the second? He I'm was sorry, put in guys. But it seems like she's saying that Puffy was a beard. You know, he wow. was being used by Clive Davis and like all the other the high ups, higher ups to keep the rap to, culture. Yeah, the you know like stagnated, just all messed up. To you know, to keep it so that they could continue to control it. He was like he was the beard in all of this. So are they gonna come wow. after Clive? This is like getting, this is this scary. Is and she's dropping some names. I, Lord, Here please we go. protect this woman. Here we go, guys. List of lost is ridiculous. And everyone knows Diddy was selected for this job. Wow. He's the Judas. He's the Judas. Do you think Ooh, that if he's cornered in the way that he's been now, that he may start revealing things about other people? He has no choice. His uh -oh. ego and his drug addiction won't allow him to do anything different. Anybody who thinks He's not going to talk. It's crazy. Wow. The simple fact that he's not saying more now only means that the people who have been protecting him all along, who put him in position to be such a horror to the black community, still find value in him. He's got everybody on tape. Wow. They all know it. For those who were never Freak at off. these freak-off parties, what were they like? Mm -hmm. See, this is the thing. Everything that I'm about to say to you is not my first-hand knowledge. It is my first-hand witness account experience. I was a sex worker. I was a dominatrix before I got my record deal. Wow. Mm. That's how I know how the dark world and the sex world and the entertainment world run hand in hand. Wow. That's why the movie Blink Twice is so important. Salute to Zoe Kravitz. Whoa, Blink we, twice. we oh. saw that. Blink we twice. saw that when they took the people to the island, when they took them on, you know, and they were like giving them snake poison, snake venom. Right, And they okay. were forgetting everything. Okay. I didn't know uh, Zoe Kravitz. Yes, produced the, that or directed that. I didn't okay. know she was a part of that. Wow. Okay, here we go, guys. Here we go. The sex workers that I have worked with throughout the years and continue to work with even to this day have worn hidden cameras. Uh oh. I have my own tapes. I've seen what they do. The ritualistic behaviors, the drugging. Putting girls in the suitcases. What? Dumping them in alleyways. It's, it's, wow. it's horrifying. What? And it's all done under the protection of this is going to be paid off. There's another NDA. This is going to be, it's terrible. 
Yeah. Oh. It seems to have been something that people, a lot of people knew about, but people were simply too scared to talk about. Everyone knows. And every person that's sitting there trying to act surprised knows very well. Wow. The whole point of this, like Cat Williams said when he sat with Shay Shay earlier this year, the whole point of this is for them in a coordinated effort to pretend like none of it is real for the public's wow. perception. Mm -hmm. so but everyone sickening. knows what's going on and she it's been going knows. on for years. It's been going on before Diddy. See, people keep looking at him like he's the Sputnik that came out of nowhere. This is someone who was designed to be what he is. Oh. We got to stop making Most ditties. Definitely. Oh, stop making ditties. And if we're going to do that, then we got to go back. We got to go back to even further the mentors of these people. Because Diddy was taught how to do what he does systematically. And Clyde Davis has been his greatest teacher. Woo! Look, I've, Clive Davis is not here to respond to that. Jaguar, Guess they're on vacation. If this goes to court, Jaguar, do you think the, the world is going to be shocked by Woo! what comes out? Oh, absolutely. I just don't know why they are. It's been happening in front of everyone's faces for decades. For this decades. For decades. How many victims? What's the difference between me and Judy Garland? Social media. Wow. Judy Garland. How, how many victims? There was none for her. How mm -hmm. many How many victims potentially Whoa. do you think there could be? Thousands. Thousands. Okay. I've talked to hundreds that I deal with still myself. Whoa. I, I think people should really look into that more. I am friends with Albie Shore. I love him. I love his children. I, uh -oh. I knew Kim. We used to all hang out together at the Kit Kat Club back in the mid-90s when Diddy was first starting his reign. Mm. I watched that whole thing happen. This lady got a lot of information. And everything that Albert has been through, every attempt on his life that has been ignored by the authorities, it all leads back to Diddy. He and was everyone just in a coma. knows it. He was just in a coma for months. The wiretapping of the phones, I'll be sure. putting air tag on children during visits. These are normal practices that these people do. Putting air tag on the children. I've got to leave it there. I, I really appreciate you joining me. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for having me. And thank you for caring. He gave her a I voice. I do care. Thank you very much. Here's Morgan. Uh, well, I'm wow. joined now by the host of Vlad TV, DJ Vlad. Uh, DJ, DJ Vlad, Vlad, I mean, pretty okay. horrifying listening to these testimonies. Um, what, what did you make of what you just heard? Uh, well, Jaguar Wright is known to be a conspiracy theorist. Uh, I don't really co-sign anything that she says. Uh, I've never had her on my show, and I don't have any plans to have her on my show. Um, you don't believe her? She got an album in 20 years, and a lot of this stuff is just... Stuff she's heard, things minute. she's making up, and so forth. Uh, I'm not saying that. Vlad, see, that's not wait a minute. Man. He did, he offered her. He got to a come. show too. Yeah, but DJ Vlad years ago, you know, offered Jaguar on his show. He he wanted her on the show. Okay. But and she I guess didn't she come. She didn't come. But he that wasn't true. What he just said. I mean, we got to do our research. I mean, you can't believe everything that you hear, but it's, I know it that seems for a like fact that DJ uh, like Vlad Jaguar information invited is her to do an interview years ago. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. There aren't serious things that Diddy may have done, but yeah, I can't co on anything that Jaguar Wright is saying, if that's your question. Well, I mean, obviously, since we last spoke, there have now been these charges against Diddy, which are incredibly serious. You didn't think yeah. at the time uh, we last spoke that he was likely to face these charges. Are you surprised it's come to this? I'm not surprised because I feel that law enforcement in general is reactionary. Mm. I think that when you look at high profile individuals, their arrests, indictments usually come after a documentary, 
uh, a big TV show, or in, in Diddy's case, it was this huge lawsuit that Cassie filed that everyone got to see all the details and all the attention that came to it. So, yeah, it wasn't a surprise uh, that it actually happened uh, because you've seen this happen over and over again. R. Kelly, um, uh, Harvey Weinstein, all the attention that he got, and then now uh, Diddy. So, yeah, I mean, this is ultimately the world that we live in. Um, but he'll have his day in court. And, you know, his lawyer said that he's not going to take a plea deal because I think a plea deal at this point is probably going to be very heavy handed, probably 20 years plus. So it makes sense for him to go to court. But we'll ultimately see what happens, um, you know, because we haven't really seen apart from some of the, the funny stuff of, oh, there's a million bottles of lube that they found there. Or, I'm sorry, a thousand bottles of lube and so forth. Um, we have yet to really see what the evidence is. And I think once we see the actual evidence, then people will actually formulate an opinion on what's happening right now. Do you think there's a lot of people in the rap world in particular who are pretty fearful right now of where this may all lead? Is it a bit like the Epstein scandal, do you think? I don't really think so because, I mean, ultimately, yeah. everyone wanted to go to Diddy's white parties uh, when they were happening. Uh, you know, if I got an invite, I would go. But there is a party within a party. There's the actual party where the big celebrities go to, the Howard Stearns and the Leonardo DiCaprios and okay. so forth. You never hear of any of them really being involved in any of this stuff. They go home, you know, at 2, 3 o'clock a.m. Uh, and then there's the private parties that seem to involve the sex workers and probably certain type of oh, types of people okay. that are kind of That's in an inner circle. No. And... We'll see if those names ultimately come out or not. You know, I think that when it comes to a situation like the feds, cooperating is a very big thing. And I think if Diddy cooperates and gives up some big names of actual crimes that they committed, that'd be a way of actually, you know, lessening the amount of time that he does or possibly even walking away. I mean, what had you heard about no. Diddy over the years? Obviously, people knew he had parties. They knew he was a big rap star and so on. But... The, the, the nature of this kind of thing. I mean, I, I'm asking because when I watched, for example, I met Diddy a couple of times. He was always perfectly charming to me. Um, yeah. But, but you know, I've met a lot of people who were charming and turned out to be monsters. Um, the, the video that came out of showing him beating up his then girlfriend in a hotel corridor was so shocking uh, yeah. that when I watched it, I remember thinking, well, this guy is capable of anything. I mean, a man that would do mm. that, who's that famous, who would do that to a woman in a hotel corridor, public hotel corridor, if he's prepared to be that violent in public, knowing there might be cameras around, he's prepared to do pretty much anything, was my conclusion. I mean, what mm -hmm. did you hear about him over the years? I, I feel yeah, the I mean, that, that tape was horrific. And uh, after our in interview that we did with Roger Bonds, who I mm -hmm. helped to bring onto the show, I did my own interview with Roger Bonds. It was a very in-depth, I think, two-hour two, two hour interview, where he goes into actually witnessing a lot of women that were physically abused uh, by Diddy. I mean, not not only wow. Cassie, of course, which he saw multiple times, but Kim Porter. Mm -hmm. uh, he was on a trip where Kim Porter got her nose broken, allegedly, by Diddy and flew in a, a plastic surgeon to fix it. Wow. Um, there was a personal chef that Diddy beat up. Uh, I actually heard uh, voicemails of her describing it. This wasn't even something that she wanted to come publicly with. Uh, there was other women uh, as well that I got details on. So I think that Diddy has a long history of violence towards women, but also of men, because there's also the Steve Stout incident. Uh, if you remember that whole situation, uh, he was in an interview, sorry, he was in a music video with Nas, Hate Me Now, and there was a scene where Diddy was on the cross, like Jesus, and I guess he went to Steve Stout wow. afterwards and said that he wants to take that part out. That part wasn't taken out. So Diddy and his entourage show up at Steve Stout's office and they beat him with a uh, champagne bottle, which uh, they ultimately settled uh, out of court for. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a lot of violence that has happened around him. And I think it, at this point, it's just catching up to him. Yeah, there's lots sad. of rumor mills about him being secretly gay or bisexual or whatever. I mean, I yeah. don't care, but do you think there's much credence to those? I mean... It's hard to say. Uh, I have heard, um, you know, because we'll remember, for example, uh, the Wendy Williams situation. Mm. She was on the radio in New York and she said that she had photos uh, of Diddy in a gay type environment of some sort. And I had someone actually explain to me what that photo was after the fact. And Diddy came in and threatened to sue the radio station unless she was fired. And she was fired and she had to go to Philly for, wow. I think, five years or something like that. Mm. So there was that. I'm not sure how true it is because it was just a photo and a photo, you know, could mean a lot of different things. Um, I mean, the fact that 
he's a cuckold that he likes to masturbate while watching women uh, that he's with have sex with other men. Um, I don't know. Is that gay? Is that bisexual? Is that just being a cuckold? It's hard to say. It's not something that I'm actually into. Uh, but I'm sure it blurs the lines between uh, homosexuality and bisexuality somewhat. Um, but I don't think he's exclusively gay because he has a lot of children. It's hard to really say, and it ultimately doesn't really matter. And, mm. you know, I've talked about this in my interviews. I think if he came forward and said, hey, I'm a bisexual man, I think a lot of the jokes, like the no diddy jokes and so forth, will kind of ease down and people might actually uh, be a little understanding of his situation a little bit more as opposed to him denying it. But ultimately, who knows? I, I have no idea. Do you, I mean, look, we've talked... <clears throat> People have talked a lot in the last few years that it's unusual that so few people in the music business have been held to account under the Me Too campaign umbrella in the way that other industries were held to account. Do you, could this be, following R. Kelly and others, could this be a tipping point where there might be a lot of other rap stars in particular, perhaps with very checkered backgrounds, lots of rumours about them, could all start falling like dominoes? It's hard to say. Like I said in the beginning, it's very reactionary. I think if there is a lot of media attention over somebody, um, there's a documentary about them, there's movies about them and so forth, I think that that ends up getting on law enforcement's radar and then you will see things kind of escalate very quickly. Um, you know, it's hard to say. R. Kelly was extremely high profile. Mm. And there will be others, but I don't think that the music industry is really having less situations than other industries. I mean, every industry has certain situations and they're high profile and there's a bunch of other stuff that kind of falls below the radar. Finally, DJ, what, what do you think is going to happen here? Do you think Diddy will ever come out of prison? That's a tough one because I was really shocked that he didn't get a bond. I thought for sure that he'd be sitting in his mansion right now awaiting trial, but he's sitting in a jail cell right now. And it could be years before this actually makes it to trial. So it proves that things are very, very serious on his end. And if you look at the R. Kelly situation, he got, I believe, 30 years. Mm. Um, this may fall along the same lines. Except the only difference is when, it, when I looked into the R. Kelly case, a lot of the convictions were based on underage girls. Mm. You know, you've heard a few spatterings of underage uh, accusations, but in general, it seemed like most of the women were of legal age in the Diddy case. So I'm thinking it won't be as severe as it is with Diddy. I'm uh, sorry, as it is with R. Kelly. But for someone like Diddy, who's in his mid-50s, he doesn't want to spend 5, 10, 20 years in prison. No. Uh, he wants to get out. He wants to, to keep it moving. So I think he will get out of prison at one point. It's just hard to say, you know, right now what it's going to be. Yeah, it is. It's a fascinating story. Um, DJ Vay, thank you very much indeed for joining me. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I'm joined now by uh, Ariel Mitchell Kidd, who's a lawyer for one of uh, Diddy's alleged victims. Um, thank you very much indeed for joining me. Uh -oh. There are so many people coming forward now with allegations about Diddy. What, what do you think about the scale of this case? Um, well, before I get into that, I kind of want to address the prior two panelists. Um, first with Mrs. Jaguar White. Uh, she said a lot of things that were very jarring in her explanation of what she saw and had firsthand accounts on. My concern for her, she's saying a lot of things that could be considered libelous. Right. And I would suggest that she contacts an attorney, if only to vet the information she has or purports to have from other victims. At least they can protect her and then they can also do their due diligence, the attorneys, to make sure that the information she's receiving is accurate outside of the things that she knows and may have proof mm -hmm. of. Uh, I was very concerned about some of the things that she had said in her prior segment. Um, I also want to address uh, Mr. Vlad, who I know to be a culture vulture who takes from the black community and doesn't give back and puts artists in situations where then they are indicted by the police. And he's very much so uh, what we call police type investigation in the black community. And for him to repudiate 
what Mrs. Wright has said, I thought was completely out of line. He can say he doesn't agree, which is fine. But um, for him to be someone who constantly uses the black community and uses them as uh, a means for his platform, I thought that was very inconsiderate and unprofessional. Now, to get to your question that you asked of me um, regarding the victims, there are victims coming out every day, even someone who contacted me last night. So uh, and it's only standing to be more individuals coming out. I do talk to some of the other attorneys who represent victims that we already have known because they filed cases who have additional victims who plan to come forward and they plan to file cases against very soon. So it's only a matter of how many more are going to come out. And it seems to be it'll be very many more. You've said that you've been contacted regarding the sale of one of the Diddy Freak Off tapes and that it features a very high profile celebrity. What can you tell us about that? So actually, uh, I recently was contacted by one of my business partners, who's also an attorney, who said to me, well, why are we not writing the demand letter to try to do the catch and kill? And I said, well, if you want to do it, uh, then I'll connect you and you can essentially do it. Uh, He was also concerned about wanting to protect the other person who was in the film, uh, mainly because I've known about this for about three and a half weeks to about a month. I've been communicating with these people who purport to have that videotape. And it wasn't until Thursday night that they outright said, can you write on your letterhead a letter to the individual who's also in the tape and see if they're interested in a catch and kill. And is that something we'll give you X amount of percentage of it. And at the time I was like, uh, I I don't think I want to be involved in this, but I hadn't had time to process. But the other attorney I'm speaking of, uh, he's pretty much been in the know the entire time uh, since I first got contacted by these individuals Mm. with the tape. And um, we're pursuing now a meeting with the three of us for us to broker, I guess, a situation where we'll have certain guarantees that once we make the representations to the person in the tape, that we have some level of uh, assurances that this is a valid tape. And and just to be clear, two thoughts about this. One, is it a household name that we're talking about here? And secondly, are they engaged in any criminality from what you understand? Um, I... Household name, very much so. Uh, more of a household name than Mr. Combs. Wow. And really? uh, criminality, they are engaged in pornography. Um, they're not doing anything illegal um, per wow. se. Uh, I can't say that the. Uh, well, I'll say this. My concern was that I could not verify the age of the individual. And so that was my concern about not having anything sent to me and viewing it in the way that I did uh, via stills, via FaceTime video. So I didn't want to have anything in my phone because uh, my issue is we can't determine if this person is 17 to 21. Right. Fascinating. Um, It's been reported there could be a class action with over 50 alleged victims of Diddy. Uh, It also feels like there could be a lot more than that. Uh Do you think when you look at this case now that he's ever going to come out of prison? I I do not think Mr. Combs will get out. I also I was not surprised that he did not get bond. I was saying from the beginning that I was fairly certain due to my experience in the legal field that he would not be getting bond and that he would be there until his court case. Um, I also feel as if having a trial would not be in his best interest. And I'll explain why everything that comes out in that criminal trial will be used by not only me, but every other civil litigator Mm -hmm. who has a civil case against Mr. Combs, everything that the federal government proves beyond a reasonable doubt because they have a higher criteria to meet than we do. uh, It's the preponderance of the evidence in civil court. So if we have the federal government, if you will, doing all of our heavy lifting for us in a very public trial, all of the discovery that is done will be very valuable, invaluable almost to every civil attorney 
who is working on a civil case, which I believe we're about at 14, 15 outside of the other attorney who recently said that he has 50 individuals. And I don't know if he actually has 50 people or if that's a shock value number. Ooh, I'd be curious to see once that filing comes out. I haven't seen it. Um, I do know other attorneys who have several individuals that they are in the process of filing a complaint for. I'm in the process of filing the complaint for another victim and fielding calls from other individuals mm -hmm. who I may take on as clients. I've actually spoke to multiple individuals, but did not take on everybody as a client because I was unable to verify what it was that they were saying, not because I didn't believe them or mm -hmm. believe that what they were saying to be true. Um, and that's why I've also expressed at the beginning that Mrs. Wright needs to seek legal counsel, uh, not only about things that she's saying, things that other people are saying that yes. she's repeating, only because a lawyer will go and do a certain level of due diligence to make sure that there's a good faith basis that the claims being asserted are actually true. But um, I never thought that Mr. Combs would get bond. I do not feel it would be advantageous for him to take this to trial because it would Most only definitely. destroy uh, well, not destroy him financially, but also let's let, let's even pretend he were to get off everything, which I absolutely do not see him being victorious in a criminal trial. The feds have, I believe, no like a 97 point something yeah. success rate. Um, he's pretty much uh, shooting blind in that situation. His attorney is not doing anything to help him either. And some of the public statements that wow. he's been giving is actually turning public perception more negatively towards Mr. Combs, not that I'm trying to help him at all in a legal sense. However, when we talk about criminal law, when we talk about the feds who are, this is not a state case, this mm -hmm. is a federal case. Um, when we talk about their success rate, the federal government, especially the Southern District of New York, um, we're talking about people who aim to kill is the best way I can put it. They are successful. They are the leaders in the field. And anything that comes out, any discovery, any testimony, any depositions that come out will be used in his civil cases, which I don't think he's go going to want because that's all he's creating evidence for us to use. And to the point that, uh, while I don't yeah. want to acknowledge Vlad, the point that he made earlier about uh, being heavy handed in terms of any settlement. I do agree to that uh, only because one of the charges and the main charges mm -hmm. is a RICO and a RICO carries a life sentence, mm -hmm. not just a 25 or 40 year or whatever. Yeah. It's a life sentence. And if we think about how RICO was created, RICO was created in New York to take down mafia bosses, mm -hmm. mob bosses. Yeah. And that's what Mr. Combs is. Mm -hmm. He's a mafia boss he's a new york mafioso boss and the rico wow. law was created to take down people like him so if he it's were over. to take a plea deal if only to save himself any potential um liability in terms of things that could be used against him in mm -hmm. uh, civil court i can't possibly uh, see him taking less than 25 to 30 years in a plea bargain however if i was him i would that would be the only option I would have and the only option I would take. Absolutely fascinating analysis. Thank wow. you very much indeed for joining me, Ariel Mitchell Kidd. Appreciate it. I like the way she cleared that up. Most definitely. That was a good job. Yes. Um, there it is. I mean, basically, this guy, Diddy, is never coming home. You got cases coming out the woodwork. Every day, people are coming up with new cases and, you know, claims or whatever. And I think he needs to take the plea deal. Most definitely. To just, you know, you're guilty. A lot of times when people don't take the deal, they end up getting worse. Yeah. Going, taking it to trial. It's not and worth it. And he could possibly get life. He could get life. Because he's a mafia boss, you know. You got to think. If he's in his 50s, you know, um... He's not coming home. No. No time soon. So it's like 25, 30 years. You, you know, yeah. you still be 80 years old, 80 plus. Yeah. You know, this so. This thing is serious. And I think there are going to be more people yeah. involved and in criminal, criminally charged. Yep. I think they have these tapes and we are going to be shocked. The world is going to be shocked of what's to come yep. in this case. Um, and it's, it's going to take you know, at least two years for them to gather everything, to get it all together, yes. 
and like the attorney said, you know, um, the Fed rate is like ninety seven percent. Yeah. So they pretty you know, much know. They look into when they take their the feds take their time. Yep. They don't just go after people. They take years they get to you, build that case. They so. definitely got enough evidence. Most definitely. Most to, definitely. Um, put you away. Yeah. So um, you know, it's just straight cut wow. and dry. Like, I think he's done. I I I think that he's going to get what he deserved. Most and definitely. And that's probably like twenty five to thirty years. Yes. Behind bars. Yes. You know, it's a shame. And they said that he was like basically designed yep. to do this. Most definitely. You know, the he's freak a replica outs. of someone else. Yeah. You know, sex trafficking, and abusing the women. He you was know. trained to do this. And 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 really, it's like like then he was like a monster because. You know, to grab six bodyguards and go hit somebody upside the head with a champagne bottle? You breaking your wife's nose? She got to get plastic surgery? Like, I mean, then we he, seen what he thought he was Cassie. untouchable. Yep. He thought he was God. He thought That's that no one could touch him. He thought he would never have his day. He thought he could do what he wanted to do to people. Yeah. And he thought that there would never be any accountability for his yes, actions. Absolutely. And what we are seeing here is that every dog has their day, you yep. know? Every Karma. Dog gotta come to the light. Yes, it's real. And this is just the light. The light is shining now. You yeah. know, so um it's no turning back from this, you know. The damage is done. Most definitely. And um you know, it's just so sad that it had to turn out this way. Yeah. Because um, I mean, this was unbelievable when I first when we first started hearing about this. Yeah, it was like, I didn't going? believe like, it, and now I am one hundred percent a one hundred percent believer. Yeah, that this man did in fact after that video commit with Cassie, these crimes. That was like the gateway. Yeah, and everything just opened up wide. Yeah, watching that video yep. was horrific for me as a woman. Yeah, you know I couldn't imagine. My heart goes out to her. Being abused. In that way, being, being on dragged, the ground, like kicked, that. and you know, and that was just the one incident that we seen. What about the other ones that we did not see? Yeah, you know, so um, wow, man, wow. Yes. Well, Jaguar, right? I pray that she, Jaguar you know, goes to the authorities so that she can yeah. have protection because she is coming out. She's coming out. And it's like she got a lot of information. And information, and she has other victims she's in contact with. Yeah. I think that it would help the case for her to go to the authorities. And I was trying to figure out, like, why she didn't lawyer up. You know, like, why she don't have, you know, lawyers. If she know this information is concrete, like, why she don't have but that? I feel like she really doesn't care about... She's not making it about herself. She cares about the, the victims. victims. Okay. She cares more about the victims, okay. so that's probably why she hasn't come out to protect the victims. Right. If she does go to authority, she has to put names out there and evidence. Yeah. She she's out. coming out with, you know, she's still protecting the ones who are secretive about what happened to them. So wow. maybe that's why she hasn't gone to authorities. Wow. Okay, so that was um, three nice, good interviews, guys, that... Um, it was definitely interesting. Yeah. You know, just to hear the information and, you know, just to go over it. Yes. Because um, this must come to a head. And Pierce Morgan, shout out to Pierce Morgan. Pierce Morgan. For, get, you know, sharing yep. his platform and allowing She's these people to come us. on and inform us, inform the public, the ones who have supported oh, Bad Boy, P. Diddy, all, you know. Over the years. We have supported him over the Since years. Since they came out. I you feel know. like he let us all down, yeah. and I just feel like he has d abused so many people that we all deserve to know what's yeah. going on. Yeah. So, Pierce Morgan, thank wow. you for using your platform. We appreciate it. We thank you so much. Yes. All right, so guys, before we get up out of here, smash that like button, give this video a big fat thumbs up, and yes. also get inside the comment section. We appreciate you guys watching. Yes, guys. That's our time. Have Sign an amazing off. day. Do it on purpose. Goodbye. All right. Peace. Peace.